The new Aquaman film is out, and I'm very surprised to say that it's actually a pretty good film. I wasn't really expecting much, since the trailer made it look god-awful, and let's be honest, DC haven't really been producing that many good films of late. But it is a pretty good film, and because of it, I've decided to do a video on Aquaman. We're going to go back to Aquaman's first love, and oddly enough, Aquaman's first love was a dolphin. And no, I am not making that up. But let's back up a bit here. This story takes place in the four-issue miniseries Time and Tide. And in this story, it's revealed that when Aquaman was a baby, because of his blonde hair, he was left to die on Mercy Rock. This is because of an old prophecy that foretold doom from a blonde child. But Aquaman doesn't die on the rock like he's supposed to. Instead, he is adopted by a family of dolphins. And because he grew up with dolphins, he thought that he was one, just a slightly deformed dolphin. And he wanted to court one of the other dolphins, but his brother got in the way, as he wanted her as well. And when their mother got involved, she tells Aquaman that the dolphins are not meant for him, which confuses him because he likes the girl dolphin and the girl dolphin likes him. But his mother tells him that he is not actually a dolphin, but instead a human, and so he must mate with a human. Though I should of course say that he isn't actually human, he's half human, but they're dolphins, they probably didn't know that much. But anyway, Shortly after this, Aquaman leaves the dolphins to find his own way in the world, and years later he finds himself wandering in Alaska, when suddenly he sees an Eskimo girl being attacked by a polar bear. Now why the bear is attacking is not exactly made clear, but it is implied that the girl started the fight and the bear is going to finish it, and indeed finish her, until Aquaman jumps in. Though at this point he was more of an aqua teenager, so he wasn't as strong, tough and experienced as he later became, meaning that he had a hard time taking the bear out and the polar bear had him pinned and was about to kill him when suddenly the Eskimo girl jumped back in the fight and stabbed the bear, not only returning Aquaman's favour of saving her, but also giving him the opening he needed to snap the bear's neck. Now after the bear fight, Aquaman is, understandably, drained and wounded, and so the Eskimo girl takes him to her home where she lives with her grandmother and her racist grandfather, who hates white men. Though since Aquaman saved his granddaughter's life, he lets this go and allows him to stay with them. Now, it takes a few weeks, but eventually Aquaman heals back up, and over the time that he has been there, he has become quite close with the Eskimo girl, whose real name is Keiko. And one day, while they're playing baseball, Aquaman goes to collect the ball, and turns round to see that Keiko is naked. Now, it's freezing cold where they are, so this is a little bit far-fetched, but we'll chalk it up to a little artistic license. But anyway, afterwards, Aquaman wakes up to find that Keiko is wounded severely and may soon die. And it's kind of hinted at, though later on made clear, that it was actually his half-brother, Orm, who attacked the girl, basically because he fancied her and was angry that Aquaman had got to her first. Aquaman is able to get her home, though she doesn't regain consciousness, and later he falls asleep and dreams that he is fighting a god for her soul and her safe return, and he wins and the girl comes back to life. So when Aquaman wakes up, Keiko is awake as well. But when Aquaman explains his weird dream and how he saved her, her grandfather goes ballistic and yells at him that he has forever cursed them for fighting this god, and he gets so worked up over it that he has a heart attack and falls to the floor dead. Now, it's not technically speaking Aquaman's fault, after all he didn't mean to give the old man a heart attack, this was just a byproduct from getting so angry. But even still, Keiko and her grandmother both feel like Aquaman killed him. And so because of this, Aquaman gave Keiko and her grandmother some space, but when he later returned to their home, they had moved on, without so much as saying goodbye or leaving a goodbye note. And Aquaman never saw her again. And though this story has been retconned with the new 52 and then the rebirth retcons of the DC Universe, it is still the original story of Aquaman's first love, both dolphin and human alike. And I have got to say that the dolphin part of the story was a bit weird. I mean, it was kind of funny and it didn't go too far, so it's not too bad, but still a bit weird. The rest of the story is actually not that bad at all, him falling in love with the Eskimo girl and their little romance is actually quite interesting. But what do you think? Do you agree with me that the dolphin bit is a bit weird? Or do you think they should have dated the dolphin? I mean, it could actually make for quite a funny parody of the character. I'm thinking of Family Guy here doing a spin-off. But be sure to let us know what you think in the comments. And I'd just like to say a quick thank you to those who made this video possible by donating to the Needle Mass Productions page on Patreon. And as always, thanks for watching, and feel free to subscribe, share, like, and comment.